Are you looking to take the Moxed Fabric DP600 Analytics Engineer Certification exam? In this course, you will learn everything you need to know to pass that exam with ease. You will be learning all the skills and concepts measured in the exam by using theory slides and hands-on tutorials in Fabric. And in this introduction episode, I will give you a ton of tips and strategies to make your exam preparation much faster and smoother. Also, I will be covering the exam scope, meaning what you need to know in order to to pass the exam. But now let's get started and get you that DP600 badge. Before we get started with the course, I will introduce myself quickly so that you know who is this guy behind the screen who is helping you to pass the DP600 exam. So my name is Alexi Partanen and I have been working in the data industry since 2017 when I first started as a data warehouse developer trainee. And since then I have had various different roles and positions and currently I'm working as a data architect for a top tier Microsoft partner company with headquarters in Finland that provides state of the art data platforms using Microsoft Data Platform stack. Also, I have been Microsoft Data Platform MVP with the focus on Microsoft Fabric since 2025, and currently I have six different Microsoft certification badges, including the DP600 badge that I'm helping you to get in this series. So I would say that I'm very experienced with Microsoft certification exams and know what I'm talking about what comes to preparing the those. I'm also one of the co-founders of the CertiAce platform that offers high quality practice questions to Microsoft certification exams. And for DP600, we have a lot of excellent practice questions there. So go check out the platform if you want to speed up your exam preparation with quality practice questions. And I have been teaching Microsoft Data Platform topics on YouTube since 2023, when I uploaded my first Azure Data Factory tutorials. Nowadays, I only focus on Microsoft Fabric related topics, and I have made over 100 different Microsoft Fabric videos to YouTube. And lastly, I run the popular Master Marks Fabric community on Discord, and I highly recommend you to join if you have any questions about Fabric and preparing to DP600 exam. We have a ton of helpful people there who are discussing Fabric topics daily. Let's first cover why to even bother getting certified in the first place and what kind of benefits it would yield. First, certification helps you structure your learning with a clear goal. Instead of studying randomly, you follow a focused path that prepares you for the exam. Second, it validates your most fabric skills. Passing the exam shows that you can apply fabric to real data analytics scenarios. Third, certification boosts your career opportunities. It makes you more attractive for new roles, promotions and exciting projects. Fourth, it helps you to stand out to employers and clients. When they see a certification in your resume, they know that you have proven expertise. And finally, certification can increase your earning potential. Especially Microsoft partner companies are typically willing to pay more for certified professionals, since partner companies actually need certain amount of certified individuals to achieve different partnership tiers with Microsoft. Personally, I have managed to get multiple bonuses for getting certified, and also I have been able able to use my certifications as leverages in salary negotiations. Now let's cover the exam scope and what kind of skills you are expected to have. DP600 exam is divided into three main sections. First, we have the section maintain a data analytics solution. That is roughly one fourth of the exam. In this section, you need to understand how to keep your fabric environment secure and well managed. That includes setting up access control at different levels using sensitivity labels and endorsing trusted items. You also need to know how to manage the development process. That means using version control, creating Power BI projects, setting up deployment pipelines and deploying models using XMLA endpoint. Then we move to the second part of the exam that is prepare data. And this is the biggest section and roughly half of the exam questions will be about this section. You need to know how to create and manage connections to different data sources. You should also know how to find and explore data using one lake catalog and real time hub. These help you quickly discover what data is already available. Then you will learn how to bring data by ingesting it or accessing it from multiple sources. It is also important to choose the right data store option. In Max Fabric and the context of this exam, that could be lake house, warehouse or an event house, depending on your needs. And finally, you should understand how to integrate one lake with event house and semantic models. 
After you have some data, the next step is transforming that data. You need to know how to create views, functions and stored procedures to shape and organize your data. You should also understand how to enrich data by adding new columns or tables that make your model more useful. A big part of transformation is learning how to design a proper star schema for your lake house or warehouse. You will also need to know how to denormalize and aggregate data to improve performance and simplify reporting. It is important to understand how to merge or join data sets from different sources. You should also know how to handle duplicates, missing values and nulls to keep your data clean and reliable. And finally, you need to know how to convert data types and filter data to make sure everything is ready for analysis. Then you need to know three different query languages that are SQL, KQL and DAX. Also, on top of those, you need to know how to use the visual query editor. Then we have the last section, implement and manage semantic models. Firstly, you need to know how to design and build semantic models. You need to know how to choose and configure the right storage modes such as import, direct let or direct query, depending on your performance and data needs. You should also know how to design a star schema for your semantic models to make reporting and analysis faster and easier. It is important to set up relationships between tables, including more advanced ones like bridge tables and many-to-many -many relationships. You will also need to know how to write DAX calculations using variables and functions. These can include iterators, filters and other advanced expressions. The exam also covers calculation groups, dynamic format strings and field parameters, which help make reports more flexible and user-friendly. You should understand when to use large model storage formats, especially for enterprise-scale datasets. And finally, you need to know how to design and build composite models. The next step is optimizing semantic models. You need to know how to improve performance in both queries and report visuals so that your reports load quickly, even with large datasets. You should also learn how to optimize DAX calculations to make your measures run efficiently. The exam includes configuring direct leg, understanding how it works and knowing the default fallback behavior. You also need to know when to use direct leg and when SQL endpoint. And finally, you should know how to implement incremental refresh so that only new or changed data is processed, saving time and resources. So, here is the entire scope of the DP600. And like you can probably tell from the scope, passing this exam requires quite a lot of in-depth knowledge. But that is the reason why I'm making this course, so that the preparation for the exam would be easier. Next, let's take a look at very briefly some key information about the exam. There is going to be roughly 40 to 60 questions in the exam and you need to answer to those in 100 minutes. So that you can spend roughly 2 minutes per question that is not that much time, since some questions can be quite long. What comes to different types of questions in the exam? There could be quite many different types of questions like typical multiple choices with only one answer correct, questions with multiple correct answers, questions that require you to fill in missing part of the code or sentence, true or false questions, questions that require you to order things or list to correct order, and also you can have one or more case studies that require you to read through a longer business case and then answer to several questions based on that. Also, it is very important to know that this exam is semi-open book and you can actually access Microsoft Learn documentation in the exam. However, this can be really a double-edged sword since timer is not stopped when you start to browse through the documentation. Later in this series, we will cover some strategies for using the Learn documentation efficiently. And actually, in my DP700 series, I have a video about using the Learn documentation efficiently and other helpful tips and strategies for taking the exam. And finally, you need to have a score of 700 out of 1000 in order to pass the exam. Also, keep in mind that 700 is not exactly the same as 70%, since some questions are worth more points than others. But still, you don't need to get nearly a perfect score in order to pass. Aim to get around 80% of the questions correct and you should be able to pass the exam.
Next, let's cover some useful resources from Microsoft that you should be aware of when preparing to this exam. First, we have the study guide. This is something that I always go through first when I start to prepare for a new Microsoft certification exam. Basically, this study guide gives you the overview of the exam and covers the skills you need to have in order to pass. It takes only like five minutes to read through the study guide and I would highly recommend you to do so. Next, we have the official learning path for DP600 that has interactive modules that teach you those skills that are needed in order to pass the exam. Also, in some of the modules there are some lab exercises that give you hands-on experience with Fabric. I would highly recommend go through the official learning pad at least once. And as a little tip slash side note, in many cases pages in the learning pad have links to documentation that dives deeper into the topic. And I would recommend you to read those pages as well. Then we have the practice assessment that Microsoft offers that you can use to benchmark your knowledge. I would only use this resource once I would think that I'm ready to take the actual exam, since in many cases the question pool in these practice exams is quite small and you would be getting a lot of same questions when you do it again and thus it is harder to benchmark your actual knowledge versus remembering the question from the previous round. Also the questions in the practice assessments tend to be a bit easier than in the actual exam. As a benchmark, I would say that if you can get at least 80% correct from the practice exam when doing it first time, then you should be ready for the actual exam. And by the way, links to all of these resources can be found in the description. Next, let's cover some more resources on top of this video series that I have to offer. First, remember to check out my Certiace platform by going to certiace.com. This platform has many free custom-made high-quality questions for DP600. Also, we constantly update the question pool at Certiace and add new questions there. Then, next, I would recommend you to check out my DP700 series that has over 11 hours of content for that exam. The thing here is that DP600 and DP700 have a ton of overlap, and many things covered in that series are totally relevant for this exam as well. Especially if you're watching this series before I have managed to complete this, and not yet covered some topics you would like to have more information about, then you can check out if that specific topic is already covered in the DP700 series. And lastly, I would really encourage you to join our Master Marks Fabric Discord community. This community has a very friendly vibe and people constantly helping each other with fabric related topics. Here you can find more support for your learning journey. And links to all of these resources can be found in the description. Next, I want to cover two different strategies that you can follow when preparing to the exam. First, we have the typical strategy that I would recommend to most people who are not that experienced with fabric yet and are looking to get their first fabric certification. First, I would read through the study guide to get an idea what this exam is all about. Then I would start going through the official learning path that teaches you the topics and skills you need for the exam. After going through the learning path at least once, I would use other resources like this video series to dive deeper into topics covered in the learning path. Also, getting hands-on experience is always super helpful, and if you can access Microsoft Fabric environment, I would highly encourage you to do so and try to build some data pipelines and reports there on your own. After you think that you have what it takes to pass the exam, it is time to benchmark your knowledge by using practice tests like the official one and some third-party ones like Certiace to see that are you ready to take the actual exam. And if you got solid scores from those practice tests, then I would just take the real exam. And remember that it's not the end of the world if you don't pass the exam on the first attempt and you can always try again. Next, let's cover a strategy that I call fast track. This strategy is for people who are experienced with fabric and maybe have already a DP700 certification and now they are looking to get the DP600 as well. When using this strategy, I would actually start the preparation in the same way as in the previously covered strategy and go through the study guide, since that only takes few minutes and gives you the idea about the skills needed in the exam. 
in the second step things get different. After the study guide I would immediately take a practice assessment. And the point here is to identify weak areas. For example, if you take the practice assessment and see that you failed the most questions about DAX and semantic models, then you know that you need to learn more about those. And vice versa, if you for example answer to all the questions about lake houses correctly, then you know that you don't really need to worry about those questions that much. After the weak areas have been identified, then you just work on those and use the official learning pad and other resources to learn more about them. After you think you have learned enough, you again take some practice assessment that is preferably a different one you took previously and check what is your knowledge now. If it seems that you have now learned enough about those weak areas, then you can take the actual exam. So this fast track strategy is about saving time and not reading about things and topics you already know very well. Now I want to give you a few good tips that make sure you will eventually pass the exam. First, I would highly recommend you to schedule exam now if you haven't already done so. This will make sure that you have a deadline at some point and you are going to take the exam. Of course, you can always reschedule the exam if you feel like that you still need more time to prepare. Then I would make a clear study plan and think about how to allocate time for studying. In most cases you don't want to stretch the study process to be super long, because then you can already start to forget things, especially if you're not using Fabric at work. Speaking of work, I would encourage you to discuss the certification process there and ask if some of your work hours could be used for studying. Especially in Microsoft partner companies you should be able to do so, because certifications benefit the company as well. Then I would recommend you to join some of the communities like local user groups or at least one of the fabric communities found online, since there you are able to ask questions about the topics you are unsure of and find people who are preparing for the exam or have already passed it and can share their tips. And as a last point I want to highlight learn by doing, which means that you want to get as much hands-on experience as possible, because that helps a ton in the actual exam. And now let me know in the comments are you preparing to DP600 exam and which topics you would like to see me cover next in this series. And remember to hit that like button and share this with other people who are looking to take the DP600 exam. Also all the slides in this series are available for channel members to download. But now I thank you for watching and see you in the next video.